Phlebotomy, Lesson 1.4, Legal Considerations and Regulatory Agencies. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, has concluded that healthcare workers have an increased risk of occupational exposure to infectious blood and body fluids that can pose serious health risks. This is because lab personnel routinely work with blood and body fluids and handle sharp objects. Compared to other jobs like, say, a bank teller or a retail sales clerk, lab personnel have more of a risk of contracting a blood-borne disease. This doesn't mean that we need to be afraid. Learning safe practices is an important component of your training program. By learning to perform your skills safely, you can limit your risk of contracting blood-borne illnesses. And there are government agencies that create rules to help you stay as safe as possible. Being alert to danger is a great way of avoiding it. OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, is a government agency whose sole purpose is to ensure worker safety. They understand that for-profit employers do not always have the best interests of the workers at heart. Employers may be tempted to limit protective supplies, like gloves or sharp containers, to increase profits. Or they may try to ignore potential dangers so that they don't have to take steps to correct them. As a result, the Occupational Exposure to Bloodborne Pathogen Standards, or BBPs, were developed. This plan helps set standards for all healthcare employers to follow to minimize or eliminate employee exposure to potentially infectious material. For instance, all healthcare employers must provide adequate gloves and other personal protective equipment for their employees. They must educate their employees on the potential dangers in the workplace and develop procedures to minimize those dangers. This is why it is so important that you follow all policies and procedures exactly. They are developed for your protection and to ensure the best quality specimen. As good as OSHA is at protecting worker safety, there are some things that need direct government intervention. The Needle Stick Prevention Act was passed by Congress to establish even greater detailed requirements regarding steps the employers must take in training employees, providing adequate supplies, incorporating medical devices that help eliminate accidental exposures, and increase documentation requirements for those accidental exposures. Your employer will outline their needle stick prevention policy and procedures during orientation and explain what to do in the event of an accidental needle stick. This is called their exposure control plan. For instance, if a needle stick occurs, you should know immediately what to do. You don't want to waste time running around trying to decide what to do or getting a hold of a supervisor to tell you what to do. An example of a needle stick policy might be to rinse the area with warm water for 15 minutes and complete an incident report, reporting to your supervisor for further direction. Employers are encouraged not to place blame on employees but rather investigate the circumstances surrounding the exposure to see if additional training, safety practices, or products should be recommended to prevent the exposure from occurring again. In other words, the focus is on preventing future exposures, not placing blame for the current exposure. Laboratories are governed by many different agencies, including the Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS, and the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, also known as OSHA. CMS, or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is primarily responsible for regulating all laboratories by establishing universal standards that must be followed by all labs and determining what tests can be performed in which settings through the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments of 1988. This is also known as CLIA 88. CLIA 88 are the rules that govern what tests can be done in which settings and establishes guidelines on the training and record keeping required for those tests. 
These standards are periodically revised and apply to all testing environments, from large corporate labs to small physician offices, to ensure that all test results are accurate and uniform. We have reviewed legal and regulatory agencies overseeing labs and their personnel and processes. Progress to Lesson 1.5 to learn about quality assurance and pre-analytical processes.